The power of the incentives that you're using in an institution is enormously important. It's still true that schools spend more time focusing on punishment than they do on reward. So for me, level one is behavioural. What, what, what are the incentives in the situation? Um, then we move on to cognitive um, approaches. And cognitive approaches, for me, really work in two ways. Uh, one is, do the people in the institution, in this case the students, but I'm going to, for reasons you'll see, I'm going to include the adults, do they understand clearly what's expected of them? When we're working with, with children and with adolescents, we need to maintain a continuous dialogue with them about what our expectations are, and that needs to be weaved into teaching. Another aspect of cognitive approaches is just thinking a little bit about how teachers process information. I think probably every trainee teacher in the country now knows that famous injunction of Bill Rogers that you tell children what to do rather than what not to do. So, for example, if you tell a room full of young boys not to fiddle with the gas taps, um, all you've done is introduce the idea of fiddling in gas taps. It's difficult to get through it a teacher training course without finding out something about Maslow's hierarchy. But it is, it's a good way of thinking about things. Everyone needs to feel safe and secure and protected in the environment uh, that they're trying to learn in. I was watching a teacher the other day introducing a lesson to a group of year seven children. And she told them she was going to teach them some difficult material. And I could see just a little bit of... Um, a little bit of body movement around the room, which she understood in an instant. She said, what I'm going to teach you is very difficult, but I've got it planned so that we can sum up what we're doing every 10 minutes, and I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do, and I can see you're a clever bunch of people, and by the end of this lesson, we're going to be a great success. And I could just see the shoulders relaxing, and I thought, she's got it. She understands that these children need to feel comfortable uh, to be able to learn, and she understands about offering reassurance. Pupil behaviour is a reflection of the adult behaviour in an institution and they follow the same laws as other institutions do and if there isn't unity of leadership and unity of purpose then there'll be unhappiness throughout the institution. I quite often do a little bit of talk around Martin Seligman's work on, on learned optimism and one of his most powerful tricks that he recommends is on your way to work in the morning, tell yourself three things that you did well the previous day and describe to yourself what qualities are, that, sorry, what the qualities are in you that it shows. So I got through to the end of the lesson, so I have perseverance. The first part of it worked well, so I've got a bit of grasp of planning. And one child was nice to me, so I'm managing to establish some relations. When you come to review your lessons at the end of the lesson, Never review them on the basis of how you feel. Always review them on the basis of how much, how far you've gone towards achieving your goals. And I think those, those little stinger tips for understanding uh, the psychology of optimism and how you feel during that first term are enormously important.